Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to be together with, uh, with family. And some of us are amongst people that we know really well. Some of us are amongst people that uh, we know just because of Sundays. And some of us are amongst people that we do not know but yet uh, feel at peace because it's your presence, it's your family that, that puts us in that position. And so, Spirit of God, we ask you to do uh, what you do. And so tonight, as we are discovering uh, more of God and more of his will and desire for our lives and maybe even learning about ourselves amidst the process, um, would you convict us of areas or um, positions of thought that need to be changed, that need to be transformed, that, that we would bring it to God in, in repentance and forgiveness so bring conviction where it's needed, that it would lead to change and freedom, and bring comfort where that is needed, God. Affirm us in the ways that we are worshiping you, the decisions we're making, and um, the way we're living out our faith. We love you. We worship you. Jesus, amen. Amen. Last night, my wife and I went out to hang out with some friends to grab dinner, uh, like, like a double date night, and um, we got there, and I was thinking all day about this burger I was going to order. Um, and you guys have those kind of days? That's, that was my day yesterday. I'm like, man, I know we got this date night. I'm, I'm going burger. I'm going french fries. Like, just, just keep bringing the refills of iced tea. Just bring a pitcher. Just put it on my, I worked hard for this burger. And we got there, and my wife was, like, talking with our other friend, uh, wife, and they're talking about sharing a burger. I'm like, sharing a burger? You crazy. No, I'm going all in. And then uh, I have the burger, and we have the dessert. And then last night we get home, and I'm like, I regret eating that whole burger. And, all. and you guys make decisions of regret where you're like, oh, no, that was kind of a bad one. Maybe I should have shared. Maybe this burger would have been more enjoyable had I shared. Uh, any of you guys ever make decisions about something that you you think will bring great joy and delight, and then you get to it, and you're like, man, it's not what I, what I thought it was. Anyone make those kind of, like, maybe it's not regrettable, but it's like, mm, didn't quite uh, hit the spot or do what I, doing what I was intending. I, I got a kid that, um, like any kid, really, gets really obsessed about things, right? Gets really focused on something they want or desire, something to purchase, a toy. Right now it's a lot of Pokemon cards, which I don't get, but, but it's a thing. And um, any of you guys kind of OCD like that, like really dialed in when you get focused on something, I want this, and you, you attach some sort of fulfillment that it's gonna bring, maybe, maybe even inadvertently in, in your mind. And, and I try to let my kid know every time they come to me about the next thing that they want. It's, it's a rocket ship, it's a new baseball, it's a, whatever it is, um, I, I try to let them know, like, like, bud, this is great, but I think you're kind of, like, I, I, I don't know if your heart's right. Like, like, I think you're a little too obsessed about this thing, and I think you're gonna be, like, kind of dissatisfied um, because I don't think it's, it's what you think it is. And no, 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 I want it, Dad, I want it, Dad, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, okay. And, and now we've come to the point with this particular child where they recognize their desire and they understand that it's something that they want and they still want it, but they're also concerned that uh, after they have it for a little bit, um, they're not gonna be as happy with it. Because this is the rhythm of the routine with my child and maybe many of us that we pursue things that we think is gonna bring some sort of uh, purpose, joy, and fulfillment, and it does, it does. But what we kind of forget over time is like that thing eventually has an expiration date of the joy or the fulfillment it can bring. That, that thing kind of has a shelf life. And I wonder, have you ever been there where you're wanting something, desiring something, uh, an experience, uh, um, a platitude, something that you desire and, and pursue, and, and have you pursued it to the extent in which it starts to lose its excitement, it starts to lose its joy, it starts to lose its fulfillment. That could be a relationship, could be a job, could be a, an amount of money you would love in your bank account, it could be uh, toys, maybe more adult toys, cars, boats, houses, apartments, whatever it may be. Here's the reality that I believe that the Bible speaks to. Everything under the sun has a shelf life and an expiration date. Everything under the sun has a shelf life and an expiration date. Therefore, 
our fulfillment from that thing also has a shelf life and an expiration date. You see, in life, we're all pursuing things that we believe will bring some sort of joy, some sort of satisfaction, some sort of uh, fulfillment, if you will. And they may be very noble things that we're pursuing. We're gonna talk about those things in the weeks to come. And those things in themselves are not wrong. Those things in themselves may not even be sinful. But it's our attitude or our posture towards those things that may lead us to a place of, um, of lacking fulfillment, of lacking joy, of lacking satisfaction because there's a great possibility that that thing we are pursuing comes with an expiration date. Here's kind of, let me, let me illustrate how this may be. And it may come in, in one of two ways, or maybe more than, than these two that I'm thinking of, but there's a desire for something. We, we acquire this said thing that we've wanted, the career, the job, the relationship, um, uh, the certain level of popularity, of influence in our campuses, in our workplaces, in our families, amongst our peer groups, whatever it is. We, it's a relationship that we want. It's a, a, a personal desire for pleasure. Whatever it is, we're pursuing. And we get that thing. And slowly over time, we realize that thing doesn't really give us what I was hoping for. It doesn't really fulfill or satisfy like I had told myself it would or like others or culture had told me it would. So therefore, that thing has an expiration date. Another way in which this happens in our lives, pursuits of maybe many of the same things, careers, money, jobs, uh, retirement, whatever it is, we're pursuing these things. Um, and then eventually the expiration date comes into play because that thing, though it may give us some sense of fulfillment or peace, but that thing is removed from our lives. And so therefore that joy and fulfillment that that thing brought because that thing is now removed, that joy and fulfillment is expired. And that thing may be removed because there's an injury that takes place and you can no longer do the job that you wanna do. That thing may be removed um, because the money runs out and I can't do the things I want to do. The thing may be removed because you're forced to have to make a change in job out of your own circumstances or that thing may be removed because some of us someday, believe it or not, may reach an age where we retire and our identity has been so wrapped up in the career and the thing we've been pursuing, the fulfillment of that thing and then once that move is removed, we're kind of wondering, who are we? What, what, what am I about? The case will be when whatever we believe will bring us some sense of satisfaction, some sense of value, joy, fulfillment. The case will be um, whatever we believe will bring us purpose and fulfillment eventually expires. And my concern, and I believe what the scriptures are gonna speak to uh, throughout our weeks to come is once that thing expires, if that's where we're finding our purpose, if that's where we're finding our value, once that expires, then so will our purpose, our value, our fulfillment, our joy. This is what the book of Ecclesiastes, I believe, preaches. And this is what we'll be talking about for the next few weeks. And so tonight, this is what I wanna do. We're gonna read all of uh, maybe 11, 12, 11 verses or so and, and kind of familiarize ourselves with the theme, with the, the author or maybe the person that was recorded as preaching, um, just to get a framework and an idea of what this book is about and to also speak to or kind of poke at, are we focused on things that will not bring us eternal fulfillment, will not bring us eternal value, eternal joy? Are we focused on things that have an expiration date? And are we uh, poorly putting our value in those things that will eventually expire? That's where we will land. But let's look with me. Ecclesiastes chapter one. Say booyah if you're there. Okay, here we go. Ecclesiastes chapter one reads this way. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. This is what he has to say. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is Vanity. This word vanity, you're going to see in this book. I pray you read this book on your own. We're not going to cover every verse on Sunday nights. Um, but this word vanity will show up 38 times in this book. It's a big deal. It's a theme here. He says, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. 
What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? 29 times in this book, you're gonna see this word, under the sun. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this through, through the weeks to come. Vanity under the sun. Verse four, one generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. It, it hurries back to rise again. The wind goes towards the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. Life is exhausting, essentially, is what he's saying. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. The ear filled with hearing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been, it's just what will be. That which is done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, see, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. Real, real uplifting book, right? right real, real page turner, if you, if you will. This is depressing. Is it not anyone where 11 verses is? And, and I'm already like, do we, have to, do we have to, is this the book we want us to go through, God? Are, are, you, are you really sure? We said vanity is a word that shows up 38 times in the book of Ecclesiastes. The Hebrew word is chavel. That's the Hebrew word, 38 times in this book. It simply means empty. It means unfulfilled. It, it means futility. It means vapor, like, like a wind, like a mist, like a dust. The preacher, so to speak, I, I would kind of tend to think it was King Solomon for various reasons, and we can talk about that later. There's, there's a chance that it wasn't King Solomon who's, who's speaking these things. But this preacher, speaker, teacher begins this book essentially saying this, everything is pointless. <laughs> Life is pointless. Everything we do is pointless. It's all vanity, it's all futility, it's all empty, it's all just but a vapor. Is that anyone you'd wanna be friends with? Anyone got a friend like that? Like, don't point fingers, but anyone got someone that's just like, man, you are just a bummer to hang out with. Um, they just really kill a vibe as soon as they walk in a room. Anyone got friends? No? Maybe you're that person? I don't know. Anyone been that person before? Like, like this life is pointless, right? No? Some of us, a few of us. You will be that person the next like big heartbreak like, like you go through. The next time you're dumped, you will be, we, we all say these words. Like after you get dumped, anyone been dumped before? Been dumped several times by the same woman too. Uh, <laughs> and every time it's like, life is pointless. What, what are we doing here? Like, why are we doing this? This is, this, is, this is horrible. But this guy and this book can feel like a real downer. It really can. And here's the thing with the book of Ecclesiastes. It isn't just someone's depressing journal entries. That's not what we're reading here. And that's not the point that God has desired that it be in the canon of scripture. Really, what is the book of Ecclesiastes? I believe it's a cautionary tale. It's a book of wisdom calling out to you and I uh, uh, to consider the realities of everything under the sun. To challenge us in which where we put our value or where we find our value. To challenge us to know that if you put your, your value, your purpose, your fulfillment in the things under the sun, you might end up writing a book very similar. Why? It's pointless. It's worthless. Everything is vanity. Though seemingly full, this book full of, of all is vanity language, you have to study it, and, and, and we'll get into it in the weeks to come, but it's sprinkled with an urge to you and I to, to look above the sun. That as we live under the sun, this side of eternity, we are to look above the sun. Maybe, may I even say beyond the sun, that we are to look into eternity, into the eyes of God, into the, the arms of Jesus as to where we find our value, where we find our purpose, where we find our fulfillment. This was the problem with Solomon. 
or whoever the, the preacher is that was writing this. He was so consumed with focusing on everything under the sun that he rarely took the time to look over the sun. So consumed with the head down that he forgot to look up as to who the provider is. Looking for fulfillment in the provision. This thing is gonna, it's gonna give me purpose. It's gonna give me life. It's gonna give me joy and happiness. And, and, and yet, sometimes that might happen to varying degrees, but eventually that's gonna wane off. And, and then where are your eyes? Where is your heart? And the preacher is just setting it up. He'll get into it more. But um, he's arguing right now that everything is empty, everything under the sun. When our eyes are focused under the sun, on the things around us, then we too can jump on board with this all is vanity heart. Here's what some writers have to say about this. Carl Sandburg, he's an American poet. He says this uh, about life. He says, life is like an onion. You peel it off one layer at a time and sometimes you weep. Anyone kind of feel that way right now? Sometimes it's just like, it just, life is just a series of weeping. That's, that's kind, of, kind of what it is. George Bernard Shaw, a great playwright, uh, said life was like, it's, it's a series of inspired follies. It's just, a, it's just kind of a bummer. Anyone else find themselves feeling like that at times? Again, after major dumps, uh, being dumps, I, I get that. But, but this is what I'm asking for us to do, and this is what the author is asking for us to do, and this is a simple thing we're setting up before we close in worship. Though we live under the sun, this side of eternity, haven, the gospel screams for us to look over the sun to look beyond the sun, to maybe, uh, well, we could use the same language and kind of pun it a little bit. Though we may live under the sun, S-U-N, we are to dedicate our lives to living under the sun, S-O-N. When you're discouraged, when you find yourself looking down, feeling like everything is pointless, that's the very moment I believe Jesus is screaming at us to look up, look up, look above. Jesus came that our eyes might be focused on him above. This is what Colossians says. Colossians 3, Ryan, you, 3, 1. You can write it down and, and look at it later. This is what Paul says. He says, if then you were raised with Christ, meaning if we've put our faith in Jesus, if we consider ourselves followers of Jesus, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Above. Look above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Don't just live under the sun, but look above the sun. Jesus came, not that we might semi-enjoy this, this pointless life, this side of eternity, but Jesus came that we would have life, and he says abundantly, John 10, 10, says this, uh, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You see, our purpose isn't to be found in the things under the sun. Our purpose is to be found in Jesus, the Son of God. Our vision, our eyes are to be focused on the things above the sun. And so it's, I think, maybe as simple as, as this, to, to reiterate everything I keep repeating. When we worship, when we idolize, or when we orient our lives uh, around things under the sun, with expiration dates, then once that thing has been removed from our life, or once that thing has just kind of been experienced to the fullest, and, and the, the kind of butterflies that that thing used to give us, once that leaves, once the value of that thing leaves, then, then all too often um, we find that our value also has left, our, our purpose also has left. So Haven, we must live our lives with a focus over the sun, eyes on Jesus who never expires. Remember what Hebrews says? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The fulfillment, the life, the purpose, the joy, the value we find in Jesus will never expire. So here's my question for us just to ponder and consider maybe even in your own heart, as we close in some worship here in a minute. Here's my question. Where's your focus? It's my question to myself. Nathan, where's your focus? 
What are you looking at that you're hoping that thing, that item, that person, that title will bring you the value you feel like you're missing? Because some of us are trying to, to, to fill God-shaped value holes with the things under the sun. Money, a career, a title, a dating relationship, a marriage, uh, kids. If I just had a house, if I just, man, oh, I'd feel it. And we're gonna hear this over and over again. It's like a, like a, a family member that you greatly respect screaming to us, encouraging us, urging us, don't look there for purpose. Don't look there for value because I've lived that life and it's not there. Over the next few weeks, we're gonna look at some of these topics and some of these themes that this, this preacher is, is, is speaking about. And this preacher essentially is preaching at themselves, I believe. And, and, um, and for anyone else that would wanna listen on to a conversation with himself and just reminding himself that I pursued all these things. I pursued the wealth, I pursued the money, I pursued the pleasure, I pursued the, the influence, the popularity, the late, if I could just leave a legacy. And he's come to the realization and the conclusion that, that it, it all's pointless. But there's another conclusion that he comes to that we'll try to get to every Sunday night when we're together. That the ultimate conclusion, this person having all the wisdom in the world, having all the wealth in the world, having all the relationships in the world, having all the legacy, potential, the pop, all of that says, eventually he'll close this book with saying, this is what life, this is where you're really gonna find fulfillment. Just fear God. Fear God, pursue him. Be obedient to his word for you. Be obedient to his commandments. And so as these things come and go that are really special and really beautiful and amazing gifts of God, these things are not bad, these things are not sinful, but as these things come and go, when they come and then when they go, we still have ourselves. We still have value. We still have purpose. And I know it's hard to understand, but the longer we do these things and the more we kind of start to hitch our wagon of value to these things, and it's always good to stop and check in with the Lord. God, where am I? Let me come back to just fearing you. Let me come back to my first love and remember why you even put me in this place to begin with. So where's your focus? Is our focus on the things under the sun or are we living with an eternal focus looking over the sun, looking to Jesus, finding our purpose and value in him? I'm gonna pray and we're gonna close in song. And, uh, and this time on the back end of our evenings are always for a time of meditation and worship. So there may be things that you feel like God's speaking to you or things you feel like you gotta have conversations with the Lord about and you're free to do that during this time. You can stand and sing, you can st sit and listen, you can kneel, you can lay down, you can worship the Lord however you see fit, but let's consider and ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts, to know our ways. Where's our focus? Where or who are we finding our value from? Let me pray. Jesus, I thank you for your word, Old Testament and new. I thank you for these books that maybe some of us have never read before, nor even knew was in the Bible until this evening. And I thank you that your purpose is for us to be in this book right now, in this season of our lives, that we might come to know you more, that we might come to have a, a, a healthier perspective and grasp on all the things you've given us, on the career you've given us, on the finances you've given us, even the, the, the toys, if you will, that you've given us, the influence that you've given us. And so, Spirit of God, would you move within our hearts and minds, and would you awaken us maybe to areas of our lives that um, we've put too much weight in, in finding value from, and, and not enough in Jesus. Align our vision with you, Jesus.